What happens when two of China's top innovators come together to create the world's smartest car? You get a cutting edge, AI powered electric sedan that combines autonomous driving, advanced engineering, and the best battery tech available. You're watching EV.com, I'm Toby, and this is the GDU 07. So the GDU 07 is no ordinary EV, it has two very interesting parents. One is the Chinese automotive group Geely, which owns a long list of brands including Zika, Lotus, Volvo. This means that the GDU 07 is built on the brand's SEA architecture, which is also shared by all of the Zikas, the Polestar 4 and the Volvo EX30. Its other parent is Baidu, which is often referred to as China's Google, which made a name for itself as the top search engine in China. Now it has its fingers in a few different pies, one of which is autonomous driving. The result of this beautiful love affair is a car that not only has the tech and the spec, but also tries to push the boundaries of user experience and reimagining how we interact with our vehicles. I think the expression test the killer, Tesla Model 3, Tesla Model Y killer, is a phrase which has been thrown around a lot over the last few years. And obviously none of them have been true because both of those cars are still alive and well today. But I will say the GDU 07 is kind of China's version of a Tesla. Just how, we will find out. The GDU 07 is the brand's first sedan. And in this deep purple color, I think you have to agree, it looks pretty nice. I think somehow it's managed to obtain this kind of like elegant, but also quite technological look. So it has a fastback design, so this kind of swoops down into a ducktail, active ducktail spoiler at the back, which will obviously go up when you hit those higher speeds. We have a trunk space of 581 liters, which is perfectly fine. Obviously we have a bit of compromise at the top here. It's not an SUV, but this is plenty of space. And beneath the floor here, we also have some more storage. But not only does the design look amazing, it's actually incredibly aerodynamic with a drag coefficient of 0.198. For example, the new Tesla Model 3 has a drag coefficient of 0.219. So this has a drag coefficient which is 10% better than that. It even slightly beats out the Tesla Model Play's 0.208. Although I have to say that while this back design does look great, the rear view using the mirror is quite compromised. Luckily, it does have a rear camera. The chief designer of GDU has called this a fusion of pure sexy design and cutting edge technology. Do you agree? So at the front, we have a clam shell hood and a real Christmas tree show of lights here. We have our daytime running lights, our high beams. But if I say, hi, Simo. You sure? We can actually see that these lights are used to communicate. And we can see right below here, there are actually two sets on each side of microphones, which are actually used to talk to the car from the outside. So let's see how this will work in some practical scenarios. So I'm coming down the side here. I want to open the door for my car and I'll have to give it a command. Right now it's only available in Chinese language. So it gives me a chance to practice my Chinese. Hi, Simo. Okay. Okay. okay, first time. Um, open the door. And again, I could say, hi, Simo. Guanbi Chumen. And it closes. But if I keep coming around to the back, I could also, maybe I've got my bags. I've just been to the shopping, just been to the supermarket, approaching the boot, and I could say, hi, Simo. Sure. Uh, as I'm walking to the car, I could ask it to open the boot and yeah, put my stuff in. Easy peasy. But this is just a couple of examples. We could actually use it for a lot of things. We could say, turn on the AC. We could say, you know, get the sat nav ready. This just gives you a glimpse at what this kind of car is about. But is it a useful or a useless function? Make sure you let us know in the comments below. Right now, let's go and have a look inside. Once 
I get in the car, all I need to do is press the brake pedal and the door will close itself. I'll also adjust my seat and my steering wheel to my position. So the first thing you'll notice about the interior of the G-Do 07 is it's very simple, quite similar to that brand again. A designer would call this the kind of less is more. So we have a simple center storage unit here with a front kind of like storage, which actually goes quite deep back there. And we have some cup holders, which is quite nice, but actually you can actually hire these back there if you don't like them. So you gives himself some more space here. This goes up and in here we have even more storage as well as a fast charging and super fast charging for type C. But of course we need to talk about the yoke in the room, which is this yoke style steering wheel. Actually, it's called the Odyssey remote. This is what Jidu call it. Odyssey, like it takes you on this wonderful and incredible journey. But in this car, this yoke steering wheel actually has a practical function so as not to obstruct your view of this massive 35.6 inch 6K screen. So I think right about now, there may be some people watching this and going, WTF, Chinese EVs are going too far with these screens, right? This screen is a little bit, a little bit much, some might say. But if you understand the concept behind this car, it begins to make a little more sense. This car has been defined by the experiences that it wants to create. And the experiences it wants to create are more than just driving a car. The experiences, in fact, are quite limitless. Of course, I gave you an example of SEMO opening the doors, opening the boot, but actually SEMO is integrated into everything in this car. It's kind of like your smart assistant, but even more than that. So it's actually integrated with AI, which is Baidu's Ernie bot. And it can do so much more than just telling you the weather or doing your directions to a location. It's capable of so many, many, many things. So for example, if my wife was feeling a little bit down, I could ask Simo for some suggestions. What can I do if my wife is feeling upset? Try listening to her feelings. Giving what a her good suggestion. Or taking her to do something she likes to relax. Problem solved. That's why this screen is so big and it's in the middle of the car because the design of this car is not led by the driving experience. It's because the driving experience is just one aspect of what this car offers. What do you think of the Zero 07 screen? Do you think it's pioneering a new way for us to interact with our vehicles? Or do you think things have gone a little bit too far? Make sure you let us know in the comments below. Now let's take a look at the rear seating. So once I sit in the back, I can close the door like this, closes itself, great, wonderful. So I was told that the rear seating of this car is acceptable for the taller person. I consider myself a taller person at 197 centimeters. And I have to say, it is acceptable. If I really want to stretch out, I could probably touch the top with my head, but I think for the average person, the seating here is absolutely fine. Judy went through huge pains to actually make this car a little bit longer. So it's five centimeters longer than the Tesla Model X, which gives it a little bit of extra legroom. Other than that, not really much going on here. We have a center console here with a small screen, which can be used to adjust your media, your air conditioner, and also your seat. So these two left and right seats, just like the front seats, have both heating and ventilation functions. So in the back, we also have access to the smart assistant. So I could say, hi, Simo. And it opens the window for me. I didn't say where I was, I just said, please open the window and it opens it for me. Cool. So like many EVs, the Zero 07 has great ride comfort, but it has its crazy side as well. So if you need that power, the power is definitely there. 530 kilowatts of it, in fact, which can take you from zero to 100 in 3.5 seconds and has a top speed of 230 kilometers per hour. I think that's probably more than enough, right? So if I do want to that bit burst of speed, it's really got loads of it. And I'm already going over the speed limit, so I have to slow down now. Handling wise is also very, very capable, uh, which also helps to have this yoke steering wheel. It kind of feels like you're you're in a racing game more or less and this yoke steering wheel doesn't take away from that feeling at all. So it comes with a 71 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate, that's LFP battery pack, but this can be swapped out for a 100 kilowatts NCM battery in the long range version, which, which will give 880 kilometers of range. Also 800 volt battery architecture means this can charge one kilometer every one second if it has the right charger. So let's talk about the autonomous driving here, which uh, I can actually turn on now, in fact. Um, 
not FSD, but ASD, which is Apollo Self-Driving, which is from Baidu. So this is the Baidu's involvement in the joint venture. I'm going to keep one hand on it just in case. But this is driving itself now to our chosen destination. So this, much like the FSD again, in a similar way to Tesla, uses vision only. So it's a pure vision system. No LiDAR on here, much like Tesla. Elon did actually say LiDAR was a bit of a waste of time. Perhaps it's too expensive. And now we see more and more brands actually coming around to this pure vision uh, way of using autonomous driving. Okay, so I actually do have to have my hands on the steering wheel while driving. Uh, although it is doing the indicating, the lane changing, the slowing down at the traffic lights. Uh, busy intersection here. Let's see how it, it goes. There's a guy on a little scooter here. He's been picked up. All right, you stop for him. That is that is very excellent, actually. And we're going around the corner. We're merging into traffic. Good job. As you'll notice, the display here is very similar to a Tesla. We have the roads. We have the... The vehicles around us uh, it is going a little bit over the speed limit for some reason I'm not really sure about that it is staying within 10% so it wouldn't give me a ticket hopefully it's available on a subscription service subscription kind of deal just like FSD so it would cost you 600 yuan a month which is around $80 or if you wanted to just buy a lifetime you could spend 30,000 uh, which is around $4,200 of course, it's a continuously a kind of learning model. So it does have a lot of the main roads and the kind of the busy roads. Some smaller roads, it doesn't really have a lot of data on yet. But of course, this is a connected vehicle. So these things will update um, and improve as the vehicle kind of grows. And a lot of people have said that ASD and FSD are almost the same. Just one letter different, right? No. They're quite comparable in terms of the service they offer. I would go a little bit further than this and say that perhaps ASD does have an edge on FSD. Of course, FSD has been around for a while and has been learning all this time and improving. But I would say that ASD does have the edge of being conceived and kind of like developed in the China market where there's loads of people, the streets are very busy and... Um, anything can kind of happen it's a bit hectic here so i think if you can kind of navigate the streets safely here you can probably do it anywhere so forget everything you know about driving the gdu 07 brings you a new concept of using a vehicle but is it the future well you might be able to find out for yourself because gdu will be entering global markets in the near future including the uae southeast asia and europe the gdu 07 is priced between 210 and 300,000 yuan in the China market, which makes it a direct competitor to that brand once again. But the real question is, is China's Tesla better than the original? Make sure you let us know in the comments. And be sure to give us a like and a subscribe. I've been Toby, this has been EV.com. See you next time.